Hi everybody, this is Alberto and today I want to show you a small LabVIEW project I was working on called uh, MQTT Queue. If you don't know what LabVIEW is, then makes no sense for you to watch this video, while if you are a LabVIEW developer and you don't know what MQTT is, I recommend you to have a look online because MQTT is a very interesting protocol. It is basically a publish-subscribe network protocol it usually runs over TCP IP and it is widely used in IoT. So here is how it works. You need to have um, a broker and then of course you can have multiple clients. So clients are able to publish messages and within the message the client has to specify a topic while other clients which are interested in getting those messages, they have to subscribe to that topic first. So this is a very uh, brief overview, but let's have a look at some code now. Here we have a very basic and very stupid LabVIEW example. We are just simulating an acquisition from a temperature sensor. This is, of course, nothing interesting. It's just to have some data going back and forth. This is one of the most common patterns. We have an upper loop taking care of the user interactions, and we have a bottom loop, which is actually doing the real job. We are using a queue to exchange data between the two loops. Nowadays, we have other techniques like channel wires, but still LabVIEW developers love queues we basically do everything with queues and the data type of the queue is completely up to you i'm using in this case um, a string for the command and the variant for the data but you can use an enum and the variant you can use two strings it's completely up to you now what's the next step the next step is to split this vi in two vi's one will have the upper loop only, and the other one will have the bottom loop only. Let's have a look at that. So here we have what I was talking about. We have two VIs. The first one is containing the upper loop, which is called GUI, and the second one is containing the bottom loop, and it's called engine. So we need two queues. One queue goes from the GUI to the engine, sending data like this. We can make it faster. And we have another queue that goes from the engine to the GUI. In this case, we are using it only to update the temperature graph. I'm doing this by using only a functional global. So the engine basically creates the queues, stores them in the functional global, and then we have uh, the bottom loop of the previous example. While the GUI reads the functional global, we have the upper loop of the previous example, and we have an additional loop here, which is just updating the temperature graph using the data coming from the engine. Now, you're probably wondering why do I want to have two VIs instead of one, and why do I want to have two queues instead of one? In this case, makes no sense at all. But believe me, when things get very complicated, this is a great approach. There are a few reasons for that. The main reason is that, like this, you can achieve a complete separation between uh, the data and the display. This is a common best practice, whatever language you are using. And in LabVIEW, this is a bit hard because for us LabVIEW developers, our brain works like uh, front panel and block diagram, front panel and block diagram. So even though you have a sub VI, you will never show the front panel the front panel is still on your brain with controls and indicator. And I think this is why it's hard for us to get this separation between the engine and the GUI, the data and the display. Now, I hope it's clear. I want to move to the next step. What's the next step? 
how about if I want to run these two VIs on two different machines, on two different PCs, let's say. Well, we can't use functional globals and we can't use lab view queues. So here is where MQTT and MQTT queue kicks in. I'll show you. So MQTT queue is basically a lab view MQTT client shaped as a lab view queue. In order to use MQTT, we need a broker. I am starting a broker on my laptop, but the broker can be anywhere in the network, even on the cloud, if you want to. I'm using Mosquito from Eclipse, which is one of the most uh, popular, but you can use whatever uh, broker you want. So I'm starting Mosquito with the default configuration. I'm just adding a dash V because I like to see something going on on this window. Now that the broker has started, I can start the VIs. And as you can see, we have some messages going back and forth. So let's have a look at the block diagram starting from the GUI this time. So we need to establish a connection between the client, in this case the GUI, and the broker. We have to specify where is the broker, the port, and possibly a name. Then we need to subscribe to a topic. In this case, the GUI is subscribing the from engine topic. And whenever the GUI is publishing a message, has to specify the from GUI topic. So in this case, let's say you're pressing start, and then the GUI is publishing a message with the string start, but specifying the topic from GUI. On the engine side, we have to connect to the same broker, of course, possibly with a different name, and we need to subscribe the from GUI topic. Now, this PI will act as the DQ in the LabVIEW queue. So whenever another client is publishing a message with the from GUI topic, this guy will DQ it, let me say. So this is how we can get our messages here, our commands. Of course, the other way around is when the engine gets a new temperature and will send the message with the command update temperature and the from engine topic. And here is where we are getting that in the GUI. Let me just finish the video talking about the data type exchanged. We can't, unfortunately, use the cluster like command and variant because um, MQTT works with strings. So we need somehow to pack all the information, the command and the data into one string. How you want to do that is completely up to you. Probably the easiest way is to use the flatten and unflatten to string lab you function. But I like to use standard technologies when possible. That's why I have here the JSON, the flatten and unflatten to and from JSON string. The reason for using standard technologies will be probably more clear uh, on the next video. But this is how I'm doing it at the moment. I have a plain string followed by a semicolon, which is my command. And the semicolon will separate the command and the data. So in this case, we have set interval as a plain string, then a semicolon as a separator, and then the data as a JSON string. When this message will arrive to the engine, this BI will split the command and the data, and this BI will get the JSON string and will uh, get the number, the actual data. I hope it's clear and I hope you enjoyed the video. In the description you will find uh, the link uh, to the GitHub uh, repo where MQTTQ is. I hope you enjoyed the video and ciao a tutti!